Welcome to episode number two from chapter five. And in this episode, we're going to go over exponential growth and logistic growth. All right. Um, this is as close to math as we're going to get in this um, this chapter. And it's really graphical math. You've got to be able to understand what these graphs are, are telling you. So pay attention to this episode. This is one you might want to watch again as you prepare for your test and your quiz. All right. Now, remember, growth is happens when the birth rate is greater than the death rate, all right? So growth can come in two flavors, exponential and logistic. So let's learn about exponential, all right? Now, exponential occurs very, very rarely, and it doesn't last a long time, typically. We're going to show you one exception a little bit later, okay? This occurs when all resources are in abundance, and there's no predator or disease pressure. So in other words, life is good, um, you can survive and reproduce as much as you would like. In fact, you're going to reproduce at a constant rate because nothing's to halt you from having babies. There's plenty of food. You got no predators. You got no disease. Once again, life is great. Okay, now an exponential graph is going to have a J shape. Now, if you look at page 133 in your book, you're going to see a picture, but I'm going to show you one here that comes up. All right, so you're going to have a J shape, and it basically it looks like this. Uh, as far as where you can say, that's a J. Now, we do see this in bacterial populations. Uh, e. coli is going to reproduce every 20 minutes, so under optimal conditions. Uh, after 20 minutes, you've got two of them. After another 20 minutes, those two are now four. And then you have eight. And then you have 16, 32, 64, 128, so on and so forth. So within 24 hours or so, you can have millions of these little boogers. Okay? And... Humans are currently experiencing um, exponential growth. Now, humans have been having exponential growth since about the industrial era, and that would be the Industrial Revolution. All right, so I'm going to add in some information here for you. Throughout human history, uh, humans have had just a slow but steady growth, nothing real big. Uh, this little area right in here, this would be the peak of the Roman Empire. So, you know, the Romans were known for having roads, lots of trade. They were big on hygiene. Um, so, therefore, the human population could explode a little bit. All right. This little dip right there, that would be the fall of the Romans. In the Dark Ages. All right. And then we have this little spike as we're starting to uh, get the creations of the manorial system and these kingdoms are starting to show up. And then this little dip right there, that would be the plague or the Black Death. And it wasn't too long after that that we have the Industrial uh, Revolution, which would occur about right in here. And ever since then, the human population has just been exploding, all right? And so we are currently in exponential growth. <laughs> And that could have all types of implications for this planet. Um, and we're going to need to learn how to handle this explosion in the human population and be good um, stewards of our resources if we want to continue this type of growth. All right, And maybe this type of growth isn't good for our planet. We're going to find that out um, throughout history. All right? So probably during your lifetime, we're going to have some better answers to this uh, question of how can our planet support all these extra human beings because humans have not reached what is called logistic growth and this is what actually happens in nature all right populations will begin with logistic growth but resources become less available your growth rate's going to have to stop in other words there's not enough food there's not enough shelter uh, disease comes into play etc cetera, etc cetera. so when we have logistic growth we have an S shape. Now, there's a picture on page 134, but it essentially looks like this. You go through your exponential phase, but then you begin to plateau off, and humans haven't reached this part. Now, the plateau at the top of the graph is called the carrying capacity. In other words, the maximum number of individuals that can be supported by the amount of resources in that given habitat. And we haven't found the carrying capacity for humans yet on this planet, which is kind of scary and exciting all at the same time.
All right, so let's show you some graphs of some examples of populations that have gone through logistic growth. All right. Here we have a paramecium. Uh, it went through uh, logistic growth, and then once resources and food became less available, it reached its carrying capacity right in here. Okay, this is called a water flea. Scientific name is Daphnia. It's a somewhat microscopic organism you're going to find in fresh water. Uh, we have it in our area of the world. And what they remember, see here, they drew a best fit line. Uh, they had a peak, and then all of a sudden they crashed down here to their carrying capacity. But as you can see here, logistic growth. The resources become limited. You slow down, and you reach your carrying capacity. Now over here, we have fur seals off of an island in Alaska. Uh, logistic, they are almost um, wiped out through the fur trade in the early 1900s. And they became protected, and they went through logistic logistic, I'm sorry, exponential growth, and then they've currently in their uh, carrying capacity. All right, so that's how it works. Um, exponential growth at a constant rate. Um, you have no disease. Resources are uh, unlimited, and you're going to have a slow, you're going to have a very rapid, steady growth. But in reality, those resources will become limited uh, at some point, and then you're going to reach logistic growth where your growth rate slows down, and then you reach carrying capacity. Okay? All right, that's going to end this episode. I know it's short and sweet, but there's some really important concepts on here. Make sure you understand how to recognize exponential growth and logistic growth and know what carrying capacity means and why it happened by looking at these graphs. So until the next time, we're going to catch you on the flip side.